It is fall on the McCullamy River. It is at this time that the Chinook salmon travel hundreds of miles from the Pacific Ocean to this point along the riverbed to spawn and then die. California Outdoor Adventures. Well, today we're just below the Comanche Reservoir at the McCullamy River Hatchery. At the hatchery here, they raise Chinook salmon and steelhead for release to this McCullany River. Once these babies are released into the river, it is at this time they will travel well over 100 miles to reach the Pacific Ocean. When they reach the ocean, they will spend between one and seven years maturing and growing. In the ocean, they have many predators such as seals and sharks and sports fishermen. During their time in the ocean, they will feed on things such as shrimp, insects, squid, krill, plankton, and smaller fish such as herring. Salmon are born in fresh water. Then they migrate downstream to the Pacific Ocean where they'll spend between one and seven years foraging for food and growing. Their bodies will also change at this time, adapting to the salt water. In late fall, after spending an average of four years in the Pacific, the salmon will begin to migrate back to the river of their origin. Scientists believe that when the salmon hit the salt water originally, they switched over to a geomagnetic cue, which would basically be latitude and longitude. So at the time of returning to river, they would know these coordinates. As the salmon enters the river for its journey back to its birthplace, it goes through many physical changes. It is said that their digestive system shuts down and it may go without food for 12 months. Well, it's been a long journey, and the salmon are back on the McCullamy River. Barriers are in place to corral them into what is known as fish ladders. These fish ladders are the last part of their journey from the Pacific Ocean until they enter what is known as holding pens. As you look at these fish that have made their journey from the Pacific Ocean, you can see that their bodies are scarred and torn from the journey. In a natural and more free environment, such as here along the Stanislaus River, the eggs are deposited in a red or gravel nest that the female has made. Then the male will come along and fertilize the eggs. This is actually the last and final act before dying. It is called spawning. Here you will see the adult salmon male fertilizing a gravel nest, also known as a red. This process will be repeated many times. Well, we're now back at the McCombie River Hatchery Fish Ladders, the last and final leg of the salmon's journey. The fish now are in the holding tank, where they will be lifted up into the hatchery building to begin the spawning process. The McCallamy River Hatchery was built in 1963. As a result of the loss of fish habitat due to the construction of the Comanche Dam,
The hatchery building is owned and maintained by East Bay Mud. Inside the building you will find it very clean and well maintained. You will see rearing troughs for the young fish to develop before they are moved outside. Once the young salmon are large enough, they will be removed from the indoor facility to the outdoor facility into what is known as raceway ponds. This whole facility is covered with a netting to protect them from predators. The time has come to harvest the salmon. They use this machine to scoop up the salmon in the holding tank and bring them into the building. The workers then sort the fish. In this case, the males are on the right side and the females are on the left side. Once the trays are filled, a gentleman sits in between the fish and begins gathering eggs. As the eggs are removed, they are then fertilized at the same time and put into a tray. It's a pretty fish. Oh yeah. So these are males on this side? Yeah. And the females on the other side? Yeah. At this point, a hatchery worker will gently clean the eggs and then place the eggs in an iodine bath. The iodine bath will gently clean these and disinfect the eggs and then they will be placed in incubation trays. At the end of the process is a group of researchers. Their goal is to take samples and measurements and to find the history of the fish that have returned to the river this year. I'm going to remove uh, a skin patch. So if it has this adipose fin present, then it does not have a microchip in its snout. But we can tell how old it is by aging the scales under a microscope. Uh -huh. If it has the adipose fin missing, then we know for sure this is a fish hatchery fish raised at the hatchery. I'm not sure which hatchery, but one of the hatcheries. Uh -huh. And then we're going to uh, cut off the head, take it back to our lab, and Usually in its snout or around the eyeball, there's a little tiny coated wire tag. Like, the, like you got a little tiny splinter in your finger, that's how big it is. 
tiny, and then we put it in our microscope to read it, and it has a code on it. It tells us which hatch or what year that this was. Fish. What a rugged and spectacular fish the salmon is. If you'd like to see the spawning Chinook, they spawn between mid-October to late December. Also along the McCullamy you have the steelhead spawn, which is between December to March. They offer formal tours at the facility as well as self-guided tours. Well, we hope you enjoyed the video and thank you for watching California Outdoor Adventures.